What is something people usually don't know about you but has influenced you and who you are? I was abducted by aliens as a child. So this is the reason why people sometimes tell me they think I'm, I'm from another planet. Oh, okay, okay, just kidding, but th there is a, a grain of serious truth in that. Almost as long as I can remember, I've been a total sci-fi nut. And if you know that, uh, that explains a lot about me. I literally learned English as a teenager so that I could read my favorite authors in the original text. I started with Asimov, not so much because uh, his writing is what I like best, but because my dad's sci-fi books were sorted alphabetically. And that early passion is related to the way I'm curious about many things, especially about futuristic topics, from spaceships to robots. And to this day, I have uh, a deep yearning to figure out how the universe works and uh, how our brains work. So I became curious about computers in particular. And when I was young, working with computers was still something very sci-fi. Well, they've become much more commonplace now. If you hadn't worked in IT, what would have become of you? Well, if I had the patience to uh, stick with my studies, I might have followed in my parents' footsteps and become some kind of scientist. Or, well, the better way to say that is actually in some alternate universe, a different version of me did become a scientist. And I'd, I'd like to think that this version of me went on to work in, say, artificial intelligence and, and made interesting contributions to figuring out how our minds work, how something uh, made from mere neurons can be so diverse and creative. One of my favorite authors was uh, Douglas of Stotter, who wrote several wonderful books about these topics. He's still a hero of mine. I'd, I'd really like to meet him someday. But instead, I learned as an autodidact. So for many years, the only degree I had was a bachelor's. My what is your biggest, biggest challenge, challenge about, and why is it a good uh, thing for, for you? several years has been to improve myself. One topic I found fascinating when I was a younger programmer was self-modifying code. Um, programs which would write to the memory locations where their own instruction resided and then later jumped to the modified parts. The first time I encountered this was when I was programming for the, uh, the early Mac systems. System 6 or System 7, something like that, that old. And of course, back then, and, and now I would say still, that was viewed as a very naughty thing to do. Um, obviously, it's a very low level thing to do. It's going to make debugging or, or even reading the code uh, very much harder to do than, than it needs to be. And it's kind of obvious that self modification is a, a large part of what we do as intelligent minds. So every time you learn something, you're in some way self-modifying. And the problem is uh, our source code in, in that sense is very hard to access. It's a tangle of neurons. So we can only hack it, uh, if at all, very indirectly. Becoming smarter is not the only thing you can do to improve yourself. Uh, another challenge is to try and become a more happy person or try to become a better person, someone who contributes to making others happy, or maybe try to become a, a better parent to my kids. And, and what so drives so. you? I'm very much driven by wanting to do things that I found to be necessary, as opposed to doing things because someone else told me to do them. Although I, I can totally understand people who have uh, a regular 9 to 5 job, I, I see it as one of the great attractions, actually, of a, a normal job that you don't have to think all the time, what should I be working on next? Uh, you can always go and ask someone for instructions. What I like best is to work within a community that has kind of the best of both worlds. I can make up my own mind about what to do next, but I still have other people around who can check my thinking. What is your biggest achievement? One of the things that tend to make me proud is when I have an original idea or, or even just when I'm able to uh, improve upon someone else's idea. Uh, and then seeing that idea spread and... Uh, seeing other people pick it up uh, and 
and then become able to achieve something of their own by building upon my ideas or my improvement on, on someone else's ideas. And you have a really nice chain reaction there. It's it's kind of like the idea of self-modifying code, but it's uh, that applied to cultures rather than to individual brains. So, so one thing I'm fairly proud of in this respect is uh, having invented the coding dojo, turning that idea into reality with the, the help of uh, Emmanuel Gaillot, a friend of, and, and colleague of mine. And I've seen the effects of uh, coming to the, the dojo every week on many people who, who tried doing that, uh, who, who came and came to the dojo to improve for uh, quite some time. And over time became really uh, impressive programmers and coders. So that, that was a, a striking effect. What is the last book you have read? Uh, the last book I read was uh, Feeling Good by David Burns. Uh, that's a book on the cognitive and behavioral approaches to treating depression that was recommended to me by J.B. Rinsberger. What question do you think I should also ask and what is the answer? Frankly, I, I'm stumped. I, I don't know how to answer that. Um, I often do my best thinking when people ask me questions. And uh, I, a lot of the time I find it difficult to ask the right questions on my own. And, and that's another reason I think community is important. So maybe uh, what, I, what I would like to ask instead is uh, if anyone uh, hearing this interview has a good question to ask me, uh, please get in touch by email.